Welcome to our Baxter hearing video about reverse hearing loss. Reverse hearing loss is a common problem, but what causes it? Various medical conditions, including Meniere's disease and genetic abnormalities, can cause this condition. Fortunately, there are some methods to help people get their hearing back. In the meantime, here are some common causes of reverse hearing loss. This video outlines these conditions. And will also cover some of the most common treatments. Meniere's disease. If you're wondering if Meniere's disease can be cured, you're not alone. Researchers have discovered many ways to treat the disorder. The first step to reversing hearing loss is to reverse Meniere's disease itself. This disease is characterized by fluctuating hearing loss and tinnitus and is often caused by a lack of blood flow to the inner ear. While many of the symptoms of this disorder aren't immediately noticeable, they can be triggered by immune responses, metabolic disruptions, or other conditions within the ear. One way to test whether Meniere's disease is causing the hearing loss is with an eye test. This procedure evaluates the health of the hair cells inside the inner ear. The affected ear will have decreased sensory hearing in both lower and higher frequencies. This type of hearing loss is more common in patients with a short course of the disease and flattens over time. A second option is to have your inner ear surgically removed, which will block the movement of information from the affected ear to the brain. This surgery destroys the inner ear and vestibular nerve. Those with severe Meniere's disease can also try diuretics to treat fluid retention. Many other treatment options aren't proven to be effective. A virtual reality treatment with CBD or acupuncture is also being used for the condition. Early treatment for Meniere's disease involves changing the patient's diet and addressing the root causes. It's important to exercise regularly to prevent the disease from worsening, and it's important to rest when feeling exhausted. However, it's important to move around to let the brain readjust to the new sensations of balance. Managing symptoms requires that the sufferer understands the disease and how to handle the effects. Learning more about the disease through communication with healthcare providers and reading articles written by people with the condition can help. Some doctors have proposed a theory to explain how Meniere's disease works. Increasing pressure in the inner ear results in an electrical discharge in the cochlea. This condition continues until the inner ear membranes heal and the body regains equilibrium. The symptoms of Meniere's disease are similar to those of a viral infection, migraine, or autoimmune reaction. However, there is no specific cure for Meniere's disease. Diagnostic tests for Meniere's disease and its variants are relatively simple. High-resolution delayed contrast magnetic resonance imaging MRI, can help identify high drops in the cochlea. In addition to diagnostic testing, diuretics and salt restriction are useful in treating fluctuating oral pressure. Transtympanic electrocochleography can also identify high drops in the cochlea. Treatments for Meniere's disease vary greatly. Treatment may involve a low-sodium diet, corticosteroids, or surgery. While surgery is unlikely to reverse the hearing loss associated with a benign tumor, it may help save the patient's life. Surgical removal of the tumor will not reverse the hearing loss associated with Meniere's disease. Some people with SNHL can still manage the condition using hearing aids and cochlear implants. Suzak syndrome there are two types of Suzak syndrome. One type occurs in the brain and usually resolves within one to three years. Other types of Suzak syndrome are more chronic and often reoccur. While all types of Suzak syndrome require immunosuppression during active disease, some forms are less likely to require such treatment. The endocrine system is an important organ in Suzak syndrome. The condition is characterized by multiple symptoms and treatment is aimed at minimizing the irreversible damage to the brain, vision, and hearing. Biological therapies and immunosuppressive drugs are used to counteract the immune system's attacks. While oral contraceptives and estrogen replacement therapies are not effective for Suzak syndrome, there are alternative ways to treat the disorder. In addition, hearing aids may be used to correct hearing loss. In severe cases of Suzak syndrome, the cochlea is damaged, resulting in sudden and total hearing loss. Treatment may involve cochlear implantation. Some patients experience sudden, intense ringing in the ears. If you experience this, consult a physician. Treatment may also include immunosuppressive agents, including immunoglobulin, rituximab, and cyclophosphamide. 
The condition can be difficult to diagnose, but the symptoms of Suzak syndrome are largely consistent with other neurological disorders. Its symptoms include confusion, short-term memory loss, and reduced problem-solving abilities. If you are noticing these symptoms in one or two of the affected areas, your doctor may suspect Suzak syndrome. If you think you have Suzak syndrome, get tested immediately for a proper diagnosis. A cure for Suzak syndrome may be available soon. The condition is an autoimmune disease that causes the body's immune system to attack the blood vessels in the brain. This damage prevents blood flow, reducing oxygen and nutrients to the brain. Suzak syndrome can result in deafness. The good news is that it is possible to reverse hearing loss with a cure. Listed below are some of the symptoms associated with Suzak syndrome. Diagnostic tests for Suzak syndrome include MRI scans. The MRI scans reveal abnormalities in the brain. In about 80% of cases, ischemic damage occurs in the corpus callosum. The images can reveal gas plaques, which are evidence of past damage to the endothelium. The doctor can also test for signs of Suzak syndrome using the CSF analysis. Neuroimaging for Suzak syndrome involves MRI and specialized tests. MRIs of the brain will be remarkable for brows. Fluorescein angiography is the most effective way to visualize brow. In a recent case, a 43-year-old female presented with progressively worsening encephalopathy and hearing loss. On her MRI, she had bilateral multiple branch retinal artery occlusions and hyperintense lesions in her brain. The underlying cause of Suzak syndrome is unknown, although it is more common in Caucasians. People with Suzak syndrome may be misdiagnosed with multiple sclerosis, atypical MS, or atypical primary angiitis of the central nervous system. The symptoms of Suzak syndrome include hearing loss and tinnitus. In addition to hearing loss, some sufferers may also experience vertigo or Meniere's disease. Endothelial cells are responsible for maintaining the integrity of the basement membrane. Endothelial cells in the retinal artery of a patient with Suzak syndrome are moderately swollen. As a result, blood and dye flow are diminished. In severe cases, endothelial cells become severely swollen and the tube becomes completely occluded. Although a typical blood test for Suzak syndrome does not reveal the cause of the hearing loss, it is helpful to identify the underlying causes. Anti-endothelial cell antibodies are often present but do not help in the diagnosis of Suzak syndrome. Therefore, it is important to get the correct diagnosis for a patient with Suzak syndrome. You can learn more about the disease by reading the articles mentioned below. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.